Three, two, one. Yo, what's going on, guys? We're here with Yatin Patel, and what'd you do today? Today we got top 16 with some other little Lubrika. Oceanics. Yeah, big shout out to everyone in Perth, who everyone helped me test, make some last minute changes. It's a good time. Thanks for everyone coming. Okay, so pretty standard. Actually, maybe not actually. I'm only playing two of this one. Because I'm playing Lone Fire Blossom. There's, there's something else I'll explain when we get there. But anyway, two and one, you have to play one of these for the combo. And then the one thing which is a bit odd is three Sunvine Sewing. 90% of people will play two. In this variant, I want to play three because it combos quite well with Petal as a way to play around Ash and Nibiru. I thought there would be lots of Ash and Nibiru. There was, but I just happened to dodge a lot of it for some reason. A lot of people have PTSD from interacting with Dryas, and yeah, the uh, Lone Fire Blossom brings the total up, like 70-80% consistent for just seeing this sort of combo. I only bricked a couple of times, happened to be when I lost. And yeah, the last two searches for the engine. Oh wait, there's another one. It's pretty mainstream to max out on these six. The main purpose of this number being higher is it enables you to play through Ash and Nibiru real well. The ideal hand is one Sunvine card and then two Riki cards, which will play through Ash. In most cases, we just we need the game just because of the Dex um, grind game. And then we play uh, two of the weird one ofs that enable the combo. The high is the ceiling, you just play them, I'm not really sure. And then the Mudans, you play two. It's like the minimum you want to play. And I opted for two Concon. One of the design elements for this deck was the smallest possible engine. The third one, win more going second. And going first, I didn't think I really needed it. The majority of the combos will search it anyway. In like a draw format, yeah, play three. But in this one, there wasn't draw everywhere. Last four Riki spells, the Glamour and the Sheet. I tried to cut it, but you definitely need it. Uh, three Dark Will and more, so it's mainly to counter uh, Runic, Sprite, uh, Kashtira. I was told that there would be a lot of hand traps in the main deck, um, so I had the talents. I didn't draw it when I needed it. Ash was a last minute change, and I'm glad I did it because I versed five Labyrinth decks. It gave me an edge game one. Even though a lot of it was losing, it made it more playable, got me closer. Originally, two of these were evenly matched. I main deck one evenly match because I wanted to be on power spells, but I made the last minute decision in the line. Um, submitting my deck list just because I had more information about the event and then Imperms which is a staple of the format. The last two evenlies, but, um, I opted for Twins instead of Cyclones just because the deck does suffer quite a lot through back row so I needed out more than just the Floodgate. Probably the mistake in the deck list, um, it, it felt good in theory because there were meant to be a lot of hand traps but the uh, Crawlet Designator, I versed a lot of Labyrinth so they didn't really play many hand traps, so I just had lots of cross out designators in my hand. Um, I used it twice, and in both cases, I cross outed for cross outs. So I didn't draw it when I got evenly matched. Uh, I played one bell, two Nibiru, additional hand traps. Draw, didn't use it that much today. And then the Predator Plant, which was pretty clutch um, in securing game one wins. Uh, you can search you're going first, and it makes it near impossible for the Floodgate decks to win the grind game. Um, the extra deck is 100% stock. Um, I don't think many people deviate from this. Um, probably see it everywhere. The two um, Jasmine is extremely powerful. It really punishes people who hold the imperm for the Jasmine. Um, it doesn't trade very well at all. You still end up on a board which is um, extremely advantageous even when they break it. It takes a lot to uh, crack everything. So Imperms were really, really awful in this matchup. And yeah, there's like a subtle art to um, winning the grind game against Labyrinth. And the majority of it involves um, uh, Strenders, just recycling as much of the uh, Rika engine as possible to make sure that you search like two to three princesses a turn, just because you constantly loop princess negating the lady in hand. And that's how like you can get damage in every turn. And then last two cards, pretty normal. Cool. That's extra deck, side deck, main deck. Um yeah, I think that's that's everything.